this babe came with no respect. No baby who gave her my bed the first day. The second day I saw something is him this day. I will I will be discussing with uh, the father publicly. She will just come like as if nothing they said. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Azine Williams. How are you all doing? Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys are fine. If you're new to this channel, kindly click on the subscription button. Click on the notification bell to let you know whenever I post any new video. Okay, guys, there was so much to talk about. I mean, what levels have been giving me content since morning? At some point, I don't even know which level to watch because, I mean, hot juice is going on in level one and then there is another hot juice going on in level two all at the same time. And and as a proco person that I am, I just wanted to capture everything. But anyway, Sha, I'm here to give you guys an update on some of the proco I got from your favorite big brother ninja housemate of the level of season. Yes, guys. So let's start with Fina. So Fina, while Fina slept, you know, this morning, nothing much was going on in the level two house. They were cooking, joking as usual. Then she woke up and of course... Amaka engaged her with this whole topic of man. <laughs> Amaka a man. Before we know it, other people were added into the conversation, the likes of Deji and Kes, and what were we talking about? Groovy, beauty, and the Fina ship. Like Kes, you know, made a lot of points, to be very, very honest. I mean, um, at some point, Kes was like the reason why beauty called um fina a hypocrite is because beauty believed that fina had an eye on groovy whilst they were still in the relationship which really got fina very very mad fina was like for i mean why would she even think that i mean i mean i never really had an eye on him yes i said i liked him but at that same time i was never involved in their relationship i always gave them chance the only time like i was involved in their relationship is if they were having issues she's a fool for thinking that if that it, she's this she's this and amaka was like i don't think you should go with what Kess is saying because i had a talk with um beauty and she said the reason why she called you a hypocrite was because while she was fighting your battles with elo swag she expected you to fight her battles with groovy like to join hands with her to finish groovy the night or the saturday night you know that all those things happen i think i was really really angry at some point, Kes had to come back and then Deji had to also chip in and Kes was really, really trying to like open Fina's eyes to see that, ah, this road where you they go, like this path where you they go, no, road no there, nice side bush you they go, so, you know, when they say, hey, go, go, be careful, now express you they go, hey, <laughs> very soon we are going to be saying, it don't happen, I don't tell her, it don't happen, yes, guys, and what I got from this whole thing about Fina, Kes, Deji, Amaka, never really advise a woman in love because Kes was really surprised that it has changed from cruise to I be from vibing to falling in love yes guys your girl fina has fallen in love and case was really surprised like uh, i thought you were telling us that you guys were just vibing and all that and she was like the moment he was moved to the other level that was when she understood that she actually loved him because she didn't understand what was going on with her and all that and Kes asked dj question morally what do you i mean what do you think about this situation of groovy fina beauty knowing that groovy is still the same reason why beauty sort of the same not really the reason but he's like the relationship is at the center of um beauty's disqualification and then she was like it depends on how close fina is to beauty and fina said she and beauty are not like best friends she only comes in to talk about you know the relationship matter that the only person that was her best friend in that house or that is her best friend in that house is amaka and um beauty's closest friends in the house were the likes of Khalid and Ilebaye that is what Fina said that the reason why you know she got involved was because they were always having fights day in day out and she had to like advise and many times she has also advised you know um groovy even in the presence of beauty she has also advised beauty you know the you know follow man they talk that kind thing you know the follow man they talk like this you have to like calm down and all those things that that was what she was doing that she never had an eye on their relationship and then she was like 
like, you know what? In this house, he doesn't really see anything wrong with it because, I mean, Griffith has to move on. But on the outside, maybe morally, it might not really be good because everybody is seeing that, okay, maybe Fina and um beauty were quite close and Cass was really trying to make fina understand that groovy is onto something maybe he's enjoying all this attention even Cass had a conversation with modella at the garden too still about this groovy thing and from everything i got nobody is really blaming fina 100 percent for this a lot of them are putting the blame on groovy because he would have done better and sort of makes sense. He would have done better. You know, Amaka was like, if she was groovy, she would have like not even been in any relationship. Me, I don't buy into that though. I don't buy into the whole groovy not being in it into any relationship. But I felt like he would have done better. All these things he's doing now could necessary, rah rah. And Amaka also said that she was interested in Groovy. At the same time, she was also interested in Giddy Fire. And Fina was like her, how do I put it, her wingman or middleman. At some point, the middleman became the main man. You get what I mean. You know, for her, she felt like with this whole beauty thing, you know, it, um, Groovy is like that river that you cannot fish from. Yes, guys. So all these things, like I told you guys, I feel like Kes and Deji have tried their best to open, you know, um, Fina's eyes but like a girl in love you don't advise them because they're never gonna listen to you i mean she was like oh I, i've been dating guys in my whole life nobody has really been caring for me you know the way groovy has he does stuff for me he's very caring he's very nice and Kes was like the more caring and nice they are the more dangerous and these are guys and i mean you cannot tell me that Kes and deji are not guy men you understand and deji was even trying to like tell her but i mean at this point um, Fina said, you know what, if he leaves her, he leaves her, she's gonna cry her cry and then she'll move on. And then she was like, what if you go into the arena and you see him kissing another girl? He said, ah, she will be hurt, you know, heartbroken, but she will still cry her cry and move on. She's a softie, you know, with an exterior of a hard girl, but deep down she's a softie and all that. All in all, Sha, I wish Fina well. I really wish her well. I just pray that she will not end up the way Beauty did because it will really, really be an unfortunate thing. Yes, guys, that was, you know, the conversation that happened around Fina. Yes. Now, away from that, while that was going on, another conversation was also going on upstairs, which Fina and Groovy also came up the radar. But this time around, it started with Monchere Diana talking about the stuff that happened last night between her, Gilifier, and Rachel. She was like, she was ready to dash Giddy Fire a slap like how can he disgrace her on national TV that he's not on her level like uh, uh, she has achieved many things more than Giddy Fire a small boy to come and you know be embarrassing her and as for Rachel nobody should even tell her that Rachel is not in the wrong here she has seen the way Rachel looks at Giddy Fire from the first day when they're having private discussions that Rachel will just you know waltz in when they are talking Rachel will just be looking even when they are kissing or cuddling I'm like hold on hold up hold up <laughs> kissing and cuddling Hmm. Now, do you know what makes this whole thing interesting? While Diana is busy fighting Rachel, Giddyfire is busy kissing Amaka. Yes, Amaka confirmed that she and Giddyfire has been kissing. How does this even make sense? How do you decide to share a man or push your roomie, so to speak, to go onto a guy that you are interested in? Because Deji was even trying to tell Amaka, see, the giddy fire you are talking about, this guy upstairs when it looks like, you know, something is happening between him and Diana. Yes, guys. And he's still in the same vein telling you that he likes you. You know, Amaka was like, oh, she doesn't want to move too fast and all that. And they were like, okay, if you're sure this guy likes you, then make a move. And that was when Amaka revealed to them that, okay, they've even started kissing, which um, Kes shouted, ah, Amaka done the kiss. So, like, it was even surprising to me. And here is, what's her name? Um, Diana fighting Rachel. Like, I feel like at this point, she's backing up the wrong tree. Don't you guys think so? Ah, <laughs> if they merge these houses, can Giddy Fire contain... Or can he handle being, like, associated with two women romantically? Two women that are practically friends? It's, it's, I'm, I just can't wait for the whole dynamics or how this whole thing is going to play out. And, you know, at some point, you know, even when doing, I don't know. See, doing smarter too, don't they tire me somehow? I guess she's a fine girl. I stand for her every time. I love her, yeah, but I feel sometimes she can overdo. She, while she was trying to, like resolve this whole matter of giddy fire and rachel and what's her name diana 
she started making some unnecessary comments like painting or exaggerating something she was like oh they were near the fridge he was duh, 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 duh. and was and diana was like um when she was coming out shex and bella were there and they didn't want her to go she was like oh come back come back and all that and she felt like everybody knows what's going on except her and kind of like makes her look like a fool you know and doing was given this whole description that was totally unnecessary which one is oh they were holding like this they were near the fridge you were i'm like babe are you really trying to help the matter right now you get and i understand also that doing is trying to be a good friend to beauty but somehow i feel she's pushing this thing too much big brother niger is a game and i believe that all of them in there are playing a game None of your faves, I'm going to say it, I'm not having any water in my mouth. None of your faves are truly innocent or victims. If you are up watching this, you know, thing with an open mind, you see that whatever fault you blame some other housemate on for what happened to your fave, they too, your faves have something that they have also done to make that matter or to whatever cause that will have to happen, if that makes sense, right? Doing is playing a game too. And I'm kind of like seeing it, even though she's a sweet girl, I feel like sometimes she's overdoing some certain things. I guess she loves beauty. I get beauty is her person, but steadily bringing up beauty, groovy, fina, mm, I feel she should just rest on it. That's my opinion. You guys should, can also have yours. I'm just being objective in this whole thing, siding so nobody. And also, why is Bella and Shags always coming up in her conversations? Right now, it's giving me obsessed like why i know bella and shakes have their own wahala why do you always have to bring it and why does she feel embarrassed about you know um deji and chichi like she's saying that oh the reason okay first of all you guys know that she and deji are no longer in talking terms right okay if you didn't know know it now um why because at when deji came into the house he and doing kind of like were having i mean deji actually liked doing first but when he saw this whole tongue swallowing and lip kissing that happened between she and Saif and then after that when Saif was now evicted she now came to Deji I mean the guy was thrown off like nah I can't deal with this and then the guy started going with um Chichi and then this whole truth and death thing happened and then it became a problem you know for um Doyen and then at the end of the day Chichi entered into a relationship with Deji. We Deji didn't even know he was in a relationship until yesterday. Now, that's by the way. My point here is she, you know, having, saying that Deji embarrassed her, that she was blindsided. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like, I, at some point, I was tired of this whole Deji and doing conversations. Every time, it, there was always a Chichi in the mix. Like... Ah, how do I even explain this to you guys? Doing is a sweetheart, but I feel so many times she's overdoing some of these things. And somehow I'm just being skeptical about the intentions behind it. All in all, it was an interesting morning in the Big Brother Niger house. Um, right now they're having their diary sessions. I can't wait for the eviction show tonight. I can't wait for all the surprises. It's going to be kickstarting by 7 p.m. West African time. So if you've not, you know, prepared your schedule or cleared your schedule, make sure you do because it's about to be an epic night. On that note, I say thank you guys so very much for being part of my channel. If you've not already subscribed, can you click on the subscription button? Click on the notification bell to let you know whenever i post any new video till i come your way again i remain your darling girl az williams have yourself a beautiful wonderful day ahead bye guys